Last time, we covered how you can use service level indicators to measure the reliability of your services and how to use service level objectives to set reliability targets. But what metrics should you use to accurately measure your reliability? Today, I'm going to show you how to use out-of-the-box platform metrics in Google Cloud to do just that. Welcome to Engineering for Reliability with Google Cloud. Let's start by remembering that you want to be able to express your service level indicators, or SLIs, as ratios or percentages. This allows you to normalize various measures of reliability and set reliability targets in a uniform way across your services. Generally, SLIs fall into two categories. Request-based SLIs measure the fraction of good units of work against the total. For example, what percentage of requests to an HTTP endpoint were successful in a given time window. Window-based SLIs measure the fraction of time intervals during which the service meets a threshold of reliability over a given time window. Now that you know what you're after, which metric should you use? Do you start writing custom telemetry to create them? Now, there may be scenarios where that makes sense, and we'll cover those later in the series. But let's start with metrics that Google Cloud Services create for you right out of the box. Let's start with a specific example. Here's a common architecture for web application that uses a global load balancer to distribute traffic to multiple GKE clusters. For this example, you can use the metrics created by the global load balancer for both availability and latency SLIs. Let's have a look at how you can use service monitoring in the Cloud Operations Suite to define a service and set an availability SLO for it. From the project dashboard, let's go to the monitoring menu and select services. There are a number of services already created in this project. Let's create a new one. We'll use a GKE deployment as the basis for our service definition. Let's name our service and submit. Now that the service has been created, let's define an availability SLO for it. The first step is to set the SLI, or service level indicator. Service is defined by App Engine, Istio, or Anthos, recognize availability and latency SLIs automatically. But we've defined a custom service, so we have to select other as the metric. We then need to decide whether our SLI should be request-based or Windows-based. We'll link to another video that describes the difference between two in the episode notes, but for now, we'll simply calculate a proportion of good to total events using a request-based SLI. The next step is to select the metric that we want to use as our SLI. Because the service is being provided by an external load balancer, we can use the request count metric. We'll count all requests in the total filter, and just those that return a 200 in the good filter. Note that this approach does include potentially erroneous requests, like those that return in 404s, in the total filter. And you should carefully consider whether that's the behavior you want. Once we've made our selections here, we can evaluate the resulting graph to determine whether the SLI will be properly evaluated. Next, we'll select the compliance period for the SLO. We want the evaluation period to be long enough that we can meaningfully evaluate and allocate error budget toward engineering work, but not so long that the error budget takes too long to recover from an incident. We also recommend using rolling windows for operational concerns rather than calendar to avoid issues with uneven numbers of weekends, for example. If you're just getting started, a 28-day rolling window is great. Note that this is not the alerting window. We'll cover alerting on SLOs in a future episode. Now, let's set a performance goal for our SLO, evaluate the SLI against the goal over the last hour, and click Continue to finalize our setup. Let's name our SLO in a way that will allow us to easily determine what it's measuring and create it. Immediately, we can see that we're actually in the negative for error budget for this particular service. This is because we're using a rolling period, so the service is evaluated over the last 28 days. This is a new service, and we simply haven't had enough good traffic to the service to recover all of the error budget. This will change as our service serves more and more traffic. So that's how you can use service monitoring in cloud operations to define a custom service and set an availability SLO for it using an out-of-the-box platform metric. If you have a request response service that uses cloud load balancers, using metrics like request count is a great way to easily define an availability SLI and set a target using an SLO. But what about a data processing pipeline? In this example, you want to monitor how long it takes for data flow to process data elements in the pipeline. This is sometimes called a data freshness SLI. 
Data flow captures this information as two metrics. System lag measures how long it takes the entire job to process messages. Per stage system lag measures how long it takes for a given step in the pipeline to process messages. Because our service isn't running on GKE, we'll have to create a custom service definition using the API. Make a request to the services endpoint in your project, providing the service ID and display name. Once the service is defined, you can create an SLO for it. You can use the system lag metric that measures how long it takes the job to process messages as an indicator of freshness. Let's have a look at how to do that in service monitoring. This time, let's start directly on the services overview screen. Our data pipeline service doesn't have any SLOs. Let's create one now. Because this is a custom service, which does not support default availability and latency metrics, we'll use other as the metric type. Next, we'll select the Windows-based evaluation type. The system lag metric measures how long it takes data elements to make it through our pipeline. This metric isn't tracked per element, so we don't have a way to count a ratio of good events to total, so we'll need to use a Windows-based SLI, where we'll track its average at, over smaller windows and count the ratio of those windows that meet our threshold over our evaluation period. Let's select the metric and specify our window criteria. Based on the historical data shown here, we can expect that the average system lag to be under two seconds. A five minute window is a great place to start. Note that shorter windows will be more responsive to changes, but could also result in a noisier signal. Now that we've configured our SLI, let's define our SLO. We'll again use a 28 day rolling period and set a target of 99%. This means that we expect 99% of our five minute windows over a 28 day period to have an average system lag of under two seconds. Let's give our SLO a good name and see how our service is performing. We can now see how our SLI has been performing against our target and how much error budget remains. And that's how you can set up a data freshness SLI for a streaming data pipeline. You've now seen how to use platform metrics to define SLIs and SLOs for services that use load balancers and for data pipelines. But what about cases where none of the out-of-the-box metrics work for you? One option that might is to use logs-based metrics. Let's have a look at how to do that using cloud logging, cloud monitoring, and service monitoring. Here's a service that emits a log entry for every request that includes a status code. Successful responses include a 200 status code, server errors include a 500 error status, and so on. From these log entries, we can create a logs-based metric that will count the number of requests. The status label will allow us to track successful requests separately from failed ones. We can view the metric in Metrics Explorer to confirm that it's working as we expect. We're now ready to configure the SLI for our service from this metric and set an SLO for it. Let's go to our services overview, select our service, and create an SLO for it. Because we're essentially using a custom metric, let's select other as the metric type. We'll create a request-based SLI because we'll want it to calculate a ratio of successful requests to all requests. Let's select our metric to be used as the SLI. We'll count the total number of requests by using the unfiltered metric. We'll count the number of good requests by only counting those that return a 200. Let's have our SLO evaluated over a rolling 28 day period with a target of 95%. Now we can see how our SLI is performing against our availability target and how much air budget we have remaining in this evaluation period. And that's how you create an SLI and SLO using logs based metrics. Thanks for joining me today. In this episode, we look at how to use platform metrics to define service level indicators and set service level objectives against those. We covered using load balancer metrics for request response services, data flow metrics for data processing pipelines, and logs based metrics for services that may not emit good SLIs out of the box. You're now ready to start defining SLIs for your own services. Don't forget to like and subscribe to never miss out on more engineering for reliability with Google Cloud. See you soon.